Hello and welcome to the tutorial video for the Forza ETH Race Stack F1 10th Simulator. The simulator is a great tool for developing testing and benchmarking algorithms without requiring the use of the real car and racetrack. This video is intended to visually guide you through the process of using the simulator and its most important features, including instructions and commands for both the ROS1 and ROS2 versions of the race deck. Note that some features are not yet included in the ROS2 version and may be added over time. Where appropriate, you will see the ROS1 and ROS2 commands highlighted as follows. The simulator is based on the one provided by the F110 organization. It has been expanded in a variety of interesting ways which are highlighted in this video. Also be advised that the simulator readmes and the F110 webpage provide useful documentation for more advanced questions. Without further ado, let's dive into the simulator. As the name suggests, the F110 simulator is intended to simulate the behavior of the physical car system. As such, it can be viewed as a node which accepts control inputs to the car, simulates and visualizes the car's behavior within the track environment, and generates realistic LiDAR data and state estimates. You can then use this to run any fancy algorithm you want to try. However, note that the simulator directly outputs state estimates, so the simulator probably won't help you if you wish to play around with IMU data, for example. As the simulator accepts the same control messages and produces the same scan and state topics as the real car, it should be possible to run the algorithms on the car without any significant changes. Of course, the simulator is not the real world, but a good starting point for development. So let's get to the fun part. So let's get started with the ROS1 simulator. First, open VS Code running the ROS1 dev container. Instructions on how to install the ROS1 race stack through the VS Code dev container are given in our installation video. Note that in ROS1 we always need to launch a ROS core. When launching the simulator this is done automatically, so you don't need to worry about it. In our race stack, the simulator launches together with the base system if it uses the flag sim is true. Using this command, the simulator can be launched. You will need to specify the name of a map located in the maps folder here. Let's hit enter. As you can see, this launches an RVIS visualization of the car and the track, as well as the vehicle simulation discussed previously. Now we are free to run any additional parts of our race stack like detection, planning and control algorithms. The car in the simulator should react accordingly. At this point we can also place the car in any position by publishing a pose. This can be done using the 2D pose estimate button, clicking and holding on a point on the map and dragging in the desired orientation. In the modified ROS1 simulator we can also place obstacles using the publish point button. These are even lighter detectable, allowing you to test your obstacle avoidance capabilities, as we will see later. The obstacle can be removed again by clicking on the colored box here, which removes all obstacles. We have promised that, if we now run any additional algorithms, the simulator should simulate the car's behavior. To test this, let's launch our time trials algorithm, which we used to get pole position in qualifying at ICAR 2023. So let's open another terminal window. We can launch time trials using the following command. We will wait a moment for all nodes to initialize. And now the car is driving. In general, you can implement your own algorithms and launch them in a similar way in another terminal window. So let's pretend we want to test our obstacle avoidance and overtaking algorithms. In our race stack, we use the so-called head-to-head mode to also launch obstacle avoidance, trailing, and autonomous overtaking nodes, among other things. To do this, use this command. You could also use other control algorithms, such as Pure Pursuit, for example. If we want to test our obstacle avoidance algorithm, we can, for instance, place some obstacles using the aforementioned publish point button. Oh, the car is stopped behind the obstacle. This is because we have not yet activated overtaking, so the car is now in trailing mode. 
This can also be seen by the state indicator here, which has switched to blue, indicating trailing. We can activate overtaking by using the dynamic reconfigure feature, which has been heavily integrated into our race stack and controls a lot of features. To use dynamic reconfig, let's open a new terminal, type RQT and hit enter. You may need to open the dynamic reconfigure window by going to plugins, configuration, dynamic reconfigure. Here you can change a variety of parameters depending on what nodes are currently running. We could, for instance, change speed scalers, enable the follow the gap controller, reserved only for emergencies, and we can enable overtaking in different sectors. Let's go ahead and do that. And now the car overtakes the obstacle. Now let's say we want to test a racing and overtaking strategy against another opponent. To do this, let's look at how we can introduce an opponent in the ROS1 race deck. This functionality has been implemented in our package named Obstacle Publisher. So let's open another terminal window and launch our Obstacle Publisher package using the following command. The readme shows some of the parameters you can change, like the speed and the trajectory of the opponent. So that's it for the most important components of the simulator in ROS1. Now let's talk about launching the simulator and some of our algorithms in the ROS2 version of the race stack. Note that at the moment, the ROS2 version of the race stack does not yet contain all the functionalities of the ROS1 race stack on which our paper is based. To go ahead and launch the simulator, let's open VS Code and, in this case, the ROS2 dev container. Instructions on how to install the ROS2 race stack through the VS Code dev container are also given in our installation video. We can use this command to launch the simulator. Again, we need to specify the map being used using the flag map name and the corresponding map folder must be located in this directory. We also need to specify the car version using the flag race car version, which for the simulator is always going to be sim. So let's hit enter. Again, the simulator is launched, but this time everything is running in ROS2. Now we are free to run any additional parts of our race stack like detection, planning and control algorithms for example. The car in the simulator should react accordingly. At this point we can also place the car in any position by publishing a pose. This can be done using the 2D Pose Estimate button, clicking and holding on any point on the map and dragging in the desired orientation. We have already mentioned that if we now run any additional algorithms, the simulator should simulate the car's behavior. To test this, let's launch our time trials algorithm, which we used in qualifying. So let's open another terminal window. We can launch time trials using the following command. If we wait a moment for all nodes to initialize, the car is now driving. In general, you can implement your own algorithms and launch them in a similar way in another terminal window. So let's pretend we want to test our obstacle avoidance and overtaking algorithms. In our race stack, we use the so-called head-to-head mode to also launch obstacle avoidance, trailing, and autonomous overtaking nodes, among other things. To do this, use this command. You could also use other control algorithms such as Peer Pursuit. At this stage, the car could avoid static obstacles and dynamic opponents like in ROS1. However, the obstacle publisher in ROS2 currently only publishes virtual opponents that are not LiDAR detectable, meaning that they are not yet registered by the detection and overtaking algorithms. Should LiDAR detectable opponent publishing be introduced, please refer to the explanation for ROS1 earlier in this video and the readme for the opponent publisher. To publish a virtual opponent, you can for example run this command as shown in the readme. 
As you can see, the opponent is also circling the track. And that concludes the ROS2 simulator feature so far. As the ROS2 version is a new addition to the F110th race stack, some features still need to be converted from the ROS1 architecture. When these are released, it may be worth checking out the ROS1 section of this video, as the usage is largely similar. The appropriate readmes should supply you with anything else you need to know. With this information, you are now ready to use the Forza ETH F1 10th simulator. Special thanks goes to all the developers and the makers of the original F1 10th simulator and gym environment. Good luck and all the best for your F1 10th journey.